In Creo Simulate, you can analyze the effects of a bolt preload by creating a kind of load called preload. Here I have a connecting rod assembly. You can see that it has bolts and washers and nuts, and I want to analyze the effect of the bolt preload on one of the parts. Let me start by selecting the part, and then from the mini toolbar, I will open up the part in its own separate window. Then to get into Creo Simulate, I will go to the Applications tab, and then choose Simulate. And if you take a look on the Home tab in the Loads group, here we have the Preload command. But before I create my preload, I'm going to define a volume region for the portion of the model that is going to be affected by this load that I will create. So let's go to the Refine Model tab, and then we have the Volume Region dropdown. I'm going to create a volume region by extruding. So when I click on that, it wants me to select a sketch or define a sketch. Let me define the sketch, and I will use this plane to sketch on. Let me click on the Sketch button to get into Sketch Mode. And for the annular area that I want to use, first I'm going to hold down the right mouse button to get to my references and select this cylindrical surface as a reference. That way, when I create a circle, which I'll get to by holding down the right mouse button and getting to Sketch Tools, I can lock right into the middle of that. I'm going to sketch it out yay big. And the washer has a dimension of 16.5, so let me plug that in here. And then I will click on the check mark to get out of Sketch Mode. And for the depth of this, I will right mouse click and hold and choose Through All. And everything looks good for my extrude for my volume region. So I will click on the check mark. And there you can see the volume region in the grayish color. So now that I have the volume region created, let's go back to the Home tab. Here is the preload command. And up at the top, here we can specify a name for this load. And I will call it my preload. And I'll call it preload1 because I would probably end up creating another one on the other side. Here you can choose which set it belongs to or create a new set. Then you have the solid type dropdown list, and the default is Prismatic. Prismatic is fairly stringent in terms of what kinds of models that you can use. You need to have essentially two base surfaces that are parallel, and then all the side surfaces have to be orthogonal. If I leave this as prismatic, you'll notice I'm basically not able to pick anything in the model. Nothing is pre-highlighting. For that reason, most of the time you will probably change solid type to general. And then for the references, you can pick an entire component or a body in the component or a volume, which is the reason why I created that volume region. And the reason that you might want to use a volume is that the preload is actually going to compress the geometry in order to simulate the effects. So let me select my volume region that I just created. And then we have to choose an edge, curve, axis, or surface for the direction reference. So I will pick this surface. And then we need to specify the cross-sectional area. So how can you figure that out? Well, I took a manual brute approach. I made a copy of this part, and then I sketched in what would represent the volume region and deleted everything but the volume region, and then went to the Inspect tab and used the Mass Properties and Cross-Section Mass Properties. The so bottom line, I figured out what that value would be. Let me go back to the Home tab. And so the cross-sectional area, you can change the set of units that you're going to use to define it, but I found that the cross-sectional area was about 70 square millimeters for this particular part. And then we have the area where we can specify the preload. There is a drop-down list for the preload. And there are a number of different calculators that you can find online. And based on the size of this hole and uh, the other numbers I plugged into the calculator, I came up with 18 kilonewtons of value for the preload. So that is good. I will click on the OK button. And so there you can see the representation of the preload in the model. And if I go to my model tree and expand loads and constraints and load set one, 
we can see the preload listed in here as well. So there you have it. That's how you can create a preload in Creo Simulate.